Christ, Bishop Michael Kata, as the sixth bishop of Stockton. I welcome to all of you priests and Christian people for the guidance of Stockton and beyond. Uh, in particular, I'd like to welcome the Benedict uh, Cardinal Mahoney with us today and so many other bishops from Trout, California, and beyond. And special gratitude, Bishop Blair, by the love of the science, so dearly in this circuit, so a special joy to be with you. It is a very happy day for all of us um, at this day. Uh, this relation of Bishop Kata and Seth Constantly from Bishop Soto and the Diocese of Sacramento. Kaisak Shabbatis. A very special welcome to our Apostolic Nuncio, Archbishop Christophe Pierre, who is the Pope's representative to our nation. Uh, thank you for your presence here. We are the Pope's representative to our nation. And we invite our Bishop Pierre to the sign of the to be the, uh, the, uh, the creative installation of the Your Eminence, Cardinal Mahoney, Your Excellency, Metropolitan Archbishop Cordy Leone, Your Excellency, Bishop Blair, Your Excellency, Bishop Designate Cotta, My brother Archbishops and Bishops, Dear Priests, Deacons, Consecrated Religious and Lay Faithful of the Church in Stockton, Dear Friends, I'm very pleased to join with you today as Bishop Myron Co Joseph Cotta, a native son of the Central Valley of California, is solemnly installed as the sixth bishop of Stockton. Although it concluded more than 50 years ago, the fathers of the Second Vatican Council offered insights that are as relevant as ever. This is surely true. This is surely true of the following reflection taken from the decree on the bishop's pastoral office in the church. I quote, in exercising his office of father and pastor, a bishop should stand in the midst of his people as one who serves. Let him be a good shepherd who knows his sheep and whose sheep know him. It looks like the gospel, by the way. <laughs> Let him be a true father who excels in the spirit of love and solicitude for all. Bishop Designate Cota, you are designate until a few minutes. Huh? So don't worry. <laughs> Knowing well how your priestly Episcopal ministry you have up to now touched countless souls with God's grace and mercy, as your Episcopal motto expresses, we are very confident that you will be a true father and shepherd for the clergy and faithful being entrusted to your pastoral care and to the community at large, especially those most in material and spiritual need. May Our Lady of the Annunciation, patroness of this beloved local church, intercede for you and protect you. And at this time, I would like to thank, in a very special way, the fifth bishop of Stockton, his Excellency Stephen Blair, for his 19 years of leadership in this portion of the Lord's flock and his service more recently as Apostolic Administrator. Actually, tomorrow, March 16th, is the anniversary of his installation back in 1999 last century. <laughs> Your Excellency, 
May your apostolic labors for the spread of the gospel continue to bear abundant fruit for the building up of Christ's body in faith, hope, and love. We thank you, Bishop. And now, with great joy, I will read the apostolic letter of appointment. When I say I will read, it's not exactly true, because this letter is written in Latin. You know, it's an official letter, sent and signed by the Holy Father. You will see it later. But uh, unless you want me to read it in, uh, in Latin, yes or no? Somebody said that it would have, should have been read in Portuguese. I don't know why. <laughs> so, after much discussion, we decided to read it in English. Is it correct? <laughs> Francis, Bishop, servant of the servants of God, to our venerable brother, Myron Joseph Cotter, until now, titular bishop of Mutesi and auxiliary of the Diocese of Sacramento, appointed to the Cathedral See of Stockton, greetings and apostolic blessing. The important office which we carry out as Supreme Shepherd of the Lord's entire flock demands of us today, among other things, that we provide appropriately you heard appropriately, eh? <laughs> for the Diocese of Stockton, which is currently vacant due to the resignation of our venerable brother, Stephen Edward Blair. For this reason, you, venerable brother, owing to your proven qualities of mind and heart, as well as skill in pastoral experience, are in our judgment one who is suitable for governing it, it. Therefore, upon consultation with the Congregation for Bishops, by our supreme apostolic authority, we release you from the bond of the prior titular see of Mutesi and the Office of Auxiliary of Sacramento, and we appoint you Bishop of Stockton together with all the rights and obligations which are connected to this mission. Indeed, we mandate that you inform your clergy and people about this letter, and we exhort them to give you a warm welcome. Did you hear that? <laughs> and to remain in communion with you. Finally, venerable brother, be sure to so nourish the faithful being entrusted to, your, to you that each day they may be mindful of these words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is how all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. In addition, may the light and the joy of the Holy Spirit together with the protection of our Immaculate Lady, be always with you and with your ecclesial community, which we hold so dear to us in the beloved United States of America. Given at Rome, at St. Peter's, on the 23rd day of the month of January, in the year of the Lord, 2018, the fifth of our pontificate. And it is signed... Francis.
Most Reverend Myron Cotta. You have heard the letter of His Holiness Pope Francis. You are called by the Holy Spirit to serve Almighty God and the people of the Diocese of Stockton in faith and in love as their shepherd. Having already accepted the appointment of the Holy Father, are you willing to serve the people of this diocese in the tradition of the apostolic faith of the Church? I am. With faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and with the love of God in my heart, I accept the pastoral care of the people of God in the Diocese of Stockton. I resolve to serve faithfully the spiritual needs of this local church. Thanks be to
King David, greetings and blessings from the distant diocese of St. Lucia Beach. Hope you enjoy the show. Protestant pastor who worked with Stephen so long with Pico National.
Please stand. God, who in your wonderful providence decreed that Christ's kingdom should be extended throughout the earth and that all should become partakers of his saving redemption, grant, we pray, that your church may be the universal sacrament of salvation and that Christ may be revealed to all as the hope of the nations and the Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Lectura de la primera carta de Jeremías. Esto dice el Señor. Maldito el hombre que confía en el hombre, que en él pone su fuerza y aparta del Señor su corazón. Será como un cardo en la estepa que nunca disfrutará de la lluvia vivirá en la aridez del desierto en una tierra salobre e inhabitable bendito el hombre que confía en el Señor y en él pone su esperanza será como un árbol plantado junto al agua que hunde en la corriente sus raíces. Cuando llegue el calor, no lo marchitará. 
y sus hojas se conservarán siempre verdes. En año de sequía no se marchitará, ni dejará de dar frutos. El corazón del hombre es la cosa más traicionera y difícil de curar. ¿Quién lo podrá entender? Yo, el Señor, sondeo la mente y penetro el corazón para dar a cada uno según sus acciones, según el fruto de sus obras. Palabra del Señor. Te lo vamos, Señor. Leitura da Epístola do Apóstolo São Paulo aos Romanos Caríssimos, em virtude da graça que me foi dada, digo a todos e a cada um de vós que não se sinta acima do que deve sentir-se, mas sinta-se preocupado em ser sensato de acordo com a medida de fé que Deus distribuiu a cada um. É que como num só corpo temos muitos membros, mas os membros não têm todos a mesma função, 
assim acontece conosco. Os muitos que somos formamos um só corpo em Cristo, mas individualmente somos membros que pertencem uns aos outros. Temos dons que, consoante a graça que nos foi dada, são diferentes. Se é o da profecia, que seja usado em sintonia com a fé. Se é o do serviço, que seja usado a servir. Se um tem o dom de ensinar, que o use no ensino. Se o outro tem o dom de exortar, que o use na exortação. Quem reparte, faça-o com generosidade. Quem preside, faça-o com dedicação. Quem pratica a misericórdia, faça-o com alegria. Que o vosso amor seja sincero. Detestai o mal, apegai-vos ao bem. Sede afetuosos uns para com os outros no amor fraterno. Adiantai-vos uns aos outros na estímula mútua. Não sejais preguiçosos na vossa dedicação. Deixai-vos inflamar pelo Espírito. Entregai-vos ao serviço do Senhor. Sede alegres na esperança, pacientes na tribulação, preservantes na oração. Partilhai com os santos que passam necessidade. Aproveitai todas as ocasiões para serdes hospitaleiros. Palavra do Senhor. Graças a Deus. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because... He works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father. And I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me. But I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Your Eminence Cardinal Mahoney, Archbishop Cordelione, Archbishop Pierre, and uh, fellow archbishops the, that are here, and also all my brother bishops who are here this afternoon, welcome. All the clergy, priests, and deacons, welcome, religious, and God's faithful people. Good afternoon. Que nuestros corazones vengan cerca de Cristo, la fuente de agua viva. Mis hermanos y hermanas, me presento ante ustedes con un corazón agradecido. Un corazón agradecido a Dios Todopoderoso por el regalo de la fe, la familia y los amigos. Como su obispo, les pide sus oraciones y disposición para comp compartir y utilizar sus dones de parte de Dios mientras comienza a vivir el llamado del Espíritu Santo y guiarlos como su pastor. Vemos en el Evangelio de, de hoy, de parte de Juan, la proclamación muy clara del oficio de Jesús como el buen pastor. Es este modelo 
que mis hermanos obispos y yo desafiamos a vivir. Pero para intentar este pastoreo sin voltear hacia la guía del Espíritu Santo, hermanos, es imprudente. No puedo ser el del obispo que soy llamado a ser sin el Espíritu Santo. Es él, él es el que nos dará la gracia en los buenos tiempos y fortalecernos para ser firmes en tiempos difíciles. Todos somos ungidos y enviados como bautizados y como su obispo. Estoy listo para el camino con ustedes mientras acogemos el presente y nos movemos hacia el futuro. Fuente, como la iglesia de la diócesis de Stockton. Mientras comienzo mi ministerio en la diócesis de Stockton, como su pastor, aquí en el corazón de Valle, les pido que recen por mí, para que mantenga fiel a su llamado como su obispo. Reguen para que yo pueda tener como el rey Solomón, Deseo del Señor, un corazón comprensivo, para tener un corazón de reflexión, así como el corazón inmaculado de Nuestra Señora de la Anunciación. Y es su corazón de Nuestra Señora que nos guiará a ustedes y mí al sagrado corazón del buen pastor a quien encontramos en todas las celebraciones de la Eucaristía. Mis hermanos y hermanas, mientras comenzamos nuestro camino juntos, nunca hay que olvidar en medio de todo, como está escrito en el Salmo 48, es Él que nos conduce. Que nuestros corazones estén descendientes de Cristo, la fuente de la agua viva. Que rogamos que el Señor nos envíe su Espíritu para hacernos fuertes en la fe y activos en buenos, buenas obras, como sus discípulos misioneros. Nuestra Señora de la Anunciación ruega por nosotros. Irmãos e irmãs, que nossos corações estejam sedentos por Cristo, a fonte da água viva. Meus irmãos e irmãs, hoje estou diante de vocês com um coração agradecido, um coração grato ao Deus Todo-Poderoso, pelo dom da fé, o dom da família e o dom dos amigos. Mis hermanos y hermanas, como vosso obispo, peço-vos as vossas orações y a vossa boa voluntad para partilhar y utilizar os vossos dons, dados por Deus, para que eu possa continuar a viver o chamamento do Espírito Santo y a guiar-vos como o vosso pastor. Hoje, no Evangelho de São João, escutamos bem claro a proclamação do verdadeiro modelo de Jesus como bom pastor. É este modelo que eu e meus irmãos bispos são desafiados a viver. Mas para eu poder guiar este rebanho sem me voltar para o Espírito Santo e pedir-lhe a sua ajuda e sabedoria seria um desastre, uma tolice. Eu não posso ser bispo, que estou sendo chamado a ser, sem o Espírito Santo, irmãos. É Ele o único que nos vai abençoar e agraciar nos bons tempos. E nos vai fortalecer e encojujar nos tempos difíceis. 
Somos todos ungidos, enviados, porque somos batizados. Como vosso bispo, eu estou pronto para caminhar com vocês, abraçando o presente e enfrentando o futuro, como a igreja da Diocese de Stockton. A começar o meu ministério nesta Diocese de Stockton, como vosso pastor, aqui no coração do Val, peço-vos que rezem por mim, para que eu permaneça fiel a este chamado como vosso bispo. Rezem por mim, para que eu, como o rei Salomão, peço ao Senhor um coração compreensivo, um coração poderado como o coração imaculado de Nossa Senhora da Anunciação, um coração contempli, contemplivo e será um coração que nos levará até o sagrado coração do bom pastor e que encontramos em cada celebração da Eucaristia. Meus irmãos, em medida que começamos a nossa comunhada juntos, nunca nos esquecemos que no meio de tudo isso, como está escrito no Salmo 48, é Ele quem nos guia. Que nossos corações tenham sede de Cristo, a fonte da água viva, e oramos para que o Senhor envie o Seu Espírito para nós tornar fortes na fé e ativos nas boas obras, como seus discípulos missionários. Nossa Senhora da Anunciação, rogai por nós. My brothers and sisters, may our hearts thirst for Christ, the fountain of living water. Today I stand before you with a grateful heart and a heart grateful to Almighty God for the gift of faith, the gift of family, and the gift of friends. Faith, the generous gift from God our Father, and for me the gift of faith was first given to my grandparents who shared it with us, a faith that, carried within them, that they carried within themselves as they journeyed from the old country to America, where they settled in the state of California not just to California, but to the great Central Valley, that is, the big valley of California. I remember down south when I went to the seminary in Camarillo, one of the seminarians from Southern California asked me, now, where are you from? And I said, from the valley. <laughs> the San Fernando Valley? No, the big valley, I told them. The great valley. My grandparents, you know, uprooting themselves from their island home of the Azores, they settled in, a con in the county of Merced, located in the San Joaquin Valley, and immersed themselves in the family business as dairy farmers. And eventually, for me, that became the environment in which I was reared. There's something to say about growing up in the open spaces that idea of living in the country and experiencing the hard work and commitment that goes hand in hand in the life of agriculture and a livelihood, livelihood where one is surrounded by the cycle of nature. And that is a cycle of rising and it's a cycle of dying. You know, it was wonderful to see that my grandparents, their faith was integrated in all that they did. It was what we call a lived faith, exercised, practiced, setting an example. They lived faith along with that of my extended family, my godparents, my uncle and aunts. All these individuals in my life had an impact on my life, and I believe has played a fundamental role in my priestly vocation. Along with a gift of faith, there's the gift of family. 
And it was and continues to be the fundamental strength in my life. Growing with the caring parents, along with my brother Benny and my sisters Annette and Marilyn, not to mention my cousins, many of them are here today, can never be taken for granted. Also as family, we were blessed, and this is special, you know, with a blessed parish family. That parish family of Sacred Heart Church in the little town of Dos Palace. And then it was years later, as an ordained priest for the Diocese of Fresno, I would continue to have the experience of serving several parish communities within the agricultural setting of the counties of Merced and Fresno. And it was within these parish communities in which I was assigned that I encountered the God-given gift of good friends and great relationships. After 26 years as a priest serving the Diocese of Fresno, the journey of the call prompted me to move to the Diocese of Sacramento to serve as auxiliary bishop. I soon found myself in the northern expanse of the Sacramento Valley, and again, experiencing the vitality of the people of faith of that region of the Central Valley. Now, I find myself responding to the call and appointment as the Bishop of the Diocese of Stockton, a diocese surrounded by its sister dioceses of Fresno and Sacramento. It is a comfort to know that I am good company as we, the clergy of this diocese, the religious of this diocese, and the laity of this diocese of Stockton begin to build upon the good work you have accomplished under the Good Shepherd leadership of 19 years of Bishop Stephen Blair. 19 years leading you to the living waters of the gospel of Jesus and the teachings of the church, forming you as missionary disciples, exercising the spiritual and corporal works of mercy. We as the people living in each of the dioceses of the Central Valley are aware of the precious treasure of living water, the liquid gold that we have, that liquid gold that continues to have an essential impact on California. Just as we need the physical element of water to nourish the fertile agricultural region of the dioceses of the Central Valley, more importantly, we, as God's people, need the supernatural life-giving giving water that is Christ Jesus. We're reminded, that of this, reminded of this in the first reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretch out its roots to the stream. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. My brothers and sisters, it is God's grace and his mercy that sustains us as we share the, true, the fruits, gifts, and talents that the Holy Spirit has given us. St. Paul, in today's reading, mentions his letter to the Romans. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us exercise them. If ministry, ministering. If one is a teacher, then in teaching. If one exhorts, in exhortation. If one contributes, then do it in generosity. And if one is over others, I guess like me, do it with diligence. If one does acts of mercy, do it with cheerfulness. As we move forward as the body of Christ, let us share the gifts God has given to build the kingdom of God in the Diocese of Stockton. As we do so, let us take to heart St. Paul's words, hate what is evil, hold on to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, 
Do not grow slack in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Let us rejoice in hope. Endure affliction. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the Holy Ones and exercise hospitality. Now, brothers and sisters, that is what is needed in order for us together to move forward. As your bishop, I ask you for your prayers and your willingness to share and utilize your God-given gifts as I begin to live out the call of the Holy Spirit and to lead you as your shepherd. We find in today's Gospel from John the clear proclamation of the role of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. It is this model that I and my brother bishops are challenged to live. But to attempt this shepherding without turning to the guidance of the Holy Spirit is foolish. I cannot become the bishop, your bishop, that I'm called to be without the Holy Spirit. He is the one who will grace us in the good times, and he will strengthen us to be steadfast in the challenging times. We are anointed and sent as the baptized, and as your bishop, I am ready to the journey with you as we embrace the present and move forward into the future as the Church of the Diocese of Stockton. In his note of congratulations to me, Cardinal Mahoney reminded me of Pope Francis's words spoken last year in South America, one of his trips, and I quote, The people of God have a good sense of smell, and sometimes our task as pastors is to be behind the people. As pastor has to take up but all three different positions, in the front to mark out the road. Where are we going? Where is he leading us? In the middle, in the midst of the people, to know that road with God's people. And at the back, to ensure nobody falls behind and to let the flock then seek that road that no one falls behind. And the sheep smell a good pasture, smell a good parish smell a good diocese. A pastor has to move continually between these three positions, always moving, always leading the flock toward those living waters, the living water, Jesus, the Good Shepherd. As I begin my ministry in the Diocese of Stockton as your shepherd here in the heart of the valley, I ask you to pray that I remain faithful to this call as your bishop. Pray that I may have, as King Solomon desired from the Lord, an understanding heart, and to have a pondering heart as that of the Immaculate Heart of Our Lady of the Annunciation. That is a reflective heart, and it is her heart that will lead us to the Sacred Heart of the Good Shepherd. He who we encounter at every celebration of the Eucharist. My brothers and sisters, as we begin our journey together with this installation, let us never forget, in the midst of all, found in Psalm 48, it is He who leads us. May our hearts thirst for Christ, the fountain of living water. And we pray that the Lord will send his spirit to make us strong in faith and active in good works as his missionary disciples. Amen. Amen. Our Lady of the Annunciation, pray for us.
Brothers and sisters, as we now make our prayer for our community, for the world, let us all pray to Christ the Lord, not only for ourselves and our needs, but for the entire people. For the shepherds of our souls, especially the most reverend Myron Cotta, that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by the Good Shepherd. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Por paz entre las naciones, para que libres de toda perturbación puedan servir a Dios con libertad de corazón. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Pelos nossos irmãos e irmãs que sofrem, para que, para que confiem no Senhor e esperem pela sua luz. Let us pray to the Lord. Para sa ating lahat na natitipon dito, nawa ay manatili tayo sa pag-ibig ng Ama sa pamamagitan ng ating matibay na paniwala at matinding pagmamahal. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are sick, especially for June Francis Etchebarn, for all children who suffer, and for their families who care for them, that they may be strengthened by our love and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, cho tất cả mọi người tín hữu và những người thân yêu đã ra đi trước chúng ta trong niềm hy vọng sống lại vào ngày sau hết. Xin Thiên Chúa mở vòng tay nhân từ đón nhận họ vào bàn tiệc vui nước trời. Let us pray to the Lord. God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church, for you yourself are the source of all devotion. And grant, we pray, that what we ask in faith may be we may truly obtain. Through Christ our Lord.
Bendito sejais, Senhor Deus do Universo, pelo pão que recebemos da vossa bondade. Fruto da terra e perdai do homem, que hoje vos apresentamos, para que nós se vai tornar pão de vida. Pai, dito sejais, Senhor e Deus do Universo, pelo vinho que recebemos da vossa bondade. Fruta da videira e do trabalho do homem, que hoje vos apresentamos e, e que é para nós servir o vinho da salvação. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the people consecrated to you, O merciful God, and through the power of this sacrament, grant that the multitude of those who believe in you may constantly be made a chosen race, a royal priesthood a holy nation, a people of your own. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just.
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in the company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and given you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving thanks, giving, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, o Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. Que él nos transforme en ofrenda permanente, para que gocemos de tu heredad, junto con tus elegidos, con María, la Virgen Madre de Dios, los apóstoles y los mártires, y todos los santos, por cuya intercesión Confiamos obtener siempre tu ayuda. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity 
your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Pope Francis, my own our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayer of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from their life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Life's companion 
Let us pray. As we draw upon the fullness of your grace, we pray, O Lord, that your faithful who by your will are engaged in the things of this world may be strengthened by the power of the Eucharistic banquet to be tireless witnesses to the truth of the gospel and may every and may ever make your church present and active amid the affairs of this age through Christ our Lord The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Bow your head for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God.